Okay, in continuing our digital painting, uh, we have had some time passed between before we last worked and we're having to reopen it in PhotoP. And so just like setting up a, a painting in your studio, you need to make sure you have everything where you want it, that everything is set up. So this is how it should be set up. You have a blank white locked layer at the bottom. That's your blank canvas. On top of that, you have your sketch. If you're going to use kind of a linear sketch, but you keep it soft and light in whatever color you like. That's kind of like vine charcoal or Conte crayon on the, on the canvas, just to block in what you think you might use. You have your references. Well, well I'll build it up in order. Next, you're going to have just your your rough blocking shapes, right? And mine are pretty colorful because of the inspirations I'm using. But the whole point of the blocking shapes is that if you turn off the white canvas, if you turn off the loose shapes sketch, almost all of it is filled in, right? This is your base color. So I still have a little bit to do on my base, my base color to fill it in. And then just like you would if you were doing a painting in your studio, you might have photo reference tacked up around it. You might have uh, paintings that you like, uh, details from painters with certain color combinations you like. So I have my references all in a folder and I put that off to the side so I can steal directly from them. They're all smart objects. I might as well lock that whole folder because all I want to do is be able to look at them and steal color from them as I'm painting. So a big part of digital painting, just like digital coloring, is to only affect the layer you want to affect. So I just want to affect my basic rough shape layer right now. And so I will use my brush. And then just like painting traditionally, you have to pick your brush. And we customized the brush in the last demos. And that customization is just for the shape of the brush. So this was the shape. But remember, there's also the attributes to the brush, like how you want the computer to use that shape. So in order to do that, you also have to click on your brush settings. And you can set the different criteria, like how much it's going to jitter and change while it's being used in angle, which I definitely recommend you use, in roundness, and you can set kind of a minimum, right? In diameter, and then you can set the color. And I like to have a little bit of jitter in the color, but not so much. And definitely not a lot between foreground and background because I'm only going to be selecting with my eyedropper tool when I hit option or alt um, it's only going to be selecting the color into the foreground so unless I always want to mix some color like white right now is my background color into that new color selection I'm going to keep the jitter for foreground background at zero. So if I like those attributes and I want to save it for that brush for later, I can then say define new brush. And now I have a brush that's at 997. That's the shape that I customized, right? And I did that under edit and defining a new brush that saved the shape. But now I can also save the attributes. So when I use it, it will do all those things. It will rotate. It will have a slight variation in color. And that's what I'm looking for. OK. And then, of course, while you're using the brush, you can alter its size. And if you're using it with a tablet, you can alter whether it's pressure sensitive for size pressure sensitive for just opacity or pressure sensitive for both. But because I'm using a trackpad, none, neither of those things apply, just like if I were using a mouse. So maybe to help with processing, I'm going to turn both of those off. Okay, what big white shapes 
do I still need to fill with color to create a base painting? One way to, to see that is to duplicate your blank white canvas and then to fill it with middle gray. Some artists like to paint on what's called a toned ground. Rembrandt liked to paint on a raw umber, like a really dark raw umber ground. So some like to, to paint on a very dark toned ground. And then I, if I turn off my sketch, I can see the big areas that still, my sketch isn't that helpful to me anymore, right? It just gives kind of a soft glow to everything. So I'm gonna leave all these locked and I'm just going to, to fill in the rest of the shapes. And remember, I stay on the brush tool and I just use Option or Alt, it's the same key, depending on what kind of keyboard you have. And I can select colors right from my references, from any file that's open within PhotoP. And that's true for Photoshop as well. But it doesn't mean I could steal a color from my web browser or from my desktop. It has to be open within Photoshop or PhotoP. So I'm going to kind of fill in the hair, fill in the neck, because I'm not trying to go for representational color. I'm doing this fairly big. Take my brush down a little bit. And I'm still painting at 100% opacity. So I'm really just trying to, to fill up space right now. I can block in the eye a little bit, you know, with these smaller brushes. I can find a shadow tone. Professor, yep. I, your, your reference is, uh, I guess, a little bit different because there's not a whole ton of photos of the person yeah. you're painting. Yeah. Um, so would you recommend if we wanted to do a lifelike portrait to spend a little bit more time on the sketch itself or that'll come with building up these these colors that that's a great question it really it has to do with how you like to build an image right and i've demonstrated it in in both ways so one way is to take this sketch phase i'll just make it as a new layer for now and to actually, on that sketch phase, I'll take my brush pretty small. I'll zoom in a little bit. So about 50 is probably about as small as you'll ever need your brush if you're working at full print resolution. So I can actually trace over my um my reference why am i not seeing my line ah oh, it's very small got to one pixel for some reason okay so what i would often recommend huh is it not showing up oh because my references are on top duh okay so I'm going to move that layer up on top of my references. And what you can do is actually trace over your photo reference and find the basic shapes, the things that will help you to match those proportions. So start with the cranium, just like when we were designing creatures and we use basic shapes to, to map it out. Then do the mandible, kind of get a sense of what that shape looks like. And you might make mistakes like I just did. Another benefit of a tablet is very often styluses on tablets have an eraser at the back of them. So that's a shortcut to the eraser tool. Another shortcut to the eraser tool is just holding down E and you can get back to the brush with the B key. So there are shortcuts that sometimes are helpful. So if I hit B, it will bring me back to the brush tool. If I hit E, it will give me the eraser tool. And 
And then you want to find kind of where the eye line is. And you might, for mine, I might just find the basic shape of the eyebrow and the triangle of, of the ocular cavity. And then, of course, there's the nose, which is very distinct for everyone because that's made of cartilage, not bone, though it does come out of the face at, a, at predictable places. And then you can do a basic shape for the shape of the mouth as well. So the upper lip, so just a bunch of triangles. But this will help you match likeness and match proportion. And then the angle of the neck. And of course, it does rely on the quality of your photo reference, why it's helpful to have more than one reference. But that's basically the proportions of her head. And then it makes you, it's, it's a good practice. Not all portrait painters sketch like this. You know, some just start with big flocking shapes, which is kind of the approach I'm taking this time. But what it makes you very aware of are the little distances that matter, like the amount of, of negative space around her eye that's framed by her hair. These might be, if I like it in the photo, these are the things I want to pay attention to in my painting. Now here's kind of my favorite thing about doing this, and this is not to me the same as rotoscoping, which is digitally painting on top of a photo, right? I think it's perfectly fine because you're still adding your own creativity to it for sure to sketch from on top of a photo, just like I would use tracing paper on top of photo reference traditionally. And then you can take that and you can use what you know about compositing and you can enlarge it to your desired resolution And you can map that to your painting. And it shows me that mine is a little off, especially in the chin, just for my shapes. But um, yeah, it's going to get refined over time. So this sketch can kind of hold me to honesty. And I can even set it, let's see, with a, a blending style like soft light. And it will kind of be this transparent spectral guide as I'm painting. Though that might be a little distracting. It will show me, oh, my chin is too low there. I need to cut that back as I paint. And I would do that with paint by, by just reshaping the marks. right? But I don't want you to paint with a brush that's only nine pixels. I want you to see painting as, as really kind of boldly putting down shapes. And when you need to, erasing equally boldly, removing paint. And I can set my eraser to have one of those, those brushes with attributes as well, which I generally recommend. All right, so I'm going to turn off my sketch. I'm going to turn off this guideline. Though it does show me, that though my eyes in the right place, my nose. Actually, I'll leave the guideline on a little bit, and I'm going to continue building a rough shape. So I'll call this a um, or a basic structure sketch. And I can move it back under my references, even though they are traced from the references. And I just have that turned on for soft light. And it just shows me, okay, the nose is a little bit higher, that kind of thing. Also, a trick I like with digital art is I can take that basic shape structure sketch and I can warp it and I can turn it into a caricature. You know, I can stretch her nose, stretch her jaw, um, play it for comedic effect and then digitally paint with that structure in mind. Because remember, we're not just trying to be cameras. We're adding our own personality to it. 